Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor and I'm really enjoying my chub fishing lately, so much so that I've gone for two weeks on the trot. If you read my angling journal on a fairly regular basis, you'll know that I tend to switch species. So I'll go for a perch one week and then carp the next, then barbel, maybe back to perch or whatever. But I've really enjoyed going for chub and so I'm continuing to, uh, to fish for them this week. I have done some fishing already and I've got some footage a little bit later on in the video of, uh, of a chub making the bank. So one of those uh, good fish that I've been catching from the canal, actually get one uh, for the camera. But for now, I'm going to uh, show you some of my gear that uh, is ready to go out tomorrow morning, as it happens, because I'm doing quite a few sessions this week. I think for most of us, if we're organized anyway, our session doesn't begin the moment we get up. We don't wake up at three o'clock in the uh, summer, uh, 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning or a Monday morning or a Saturday or whatever, and start getting our gear together. We actually put it in place the day before, a couple of days before maybe, if we're not out fishing till then. And I'm the same, I get all my stuff ready and prepared so that when I get up in the morning, all I need to do is load the car and I'm on my way. And there's my quiver, as you can see there. To the right of it is the uh, is, is my carp, my carp bag. So I've got rods in there, already made up when I next go carp fishing. You can see there I've got uh, rod protectors, that's the butt protector. I've got a tip one at the other side. If you start to move up, there's my reel. I've actually changed reels this time uh, compared to what I was fishing with last week. If you saw the video, I did show my, uh, my reel. But my line is the same, and that goes all the way up there. I'm moving up further. As you can see, there's the hook. So that's all the uh, the same as last week's video. There's my net. Got a reasonable size net, of course, to catch these fish. And then coming up a little bit further, you can see my brolly. Definitely need a brolly, don't you, in this uh, in this country? So that's my quiver, all made up. I'm stepping back now, and you can see it. There it is. So that was my quiver, rod made up, ready to go. What about my rucksack? Well, there it is behind me on the bait freezer. Shall we take a look in there? My rucksack, as you can no doubt see there, is a peg one, that's a Nash. And this is uh, perfect for the sort of fishing that I do when I'm out for a, a few hours maybe after chub or roach or perch. Looking inside there, that's my camera bag. I think you see my camera's wrapped in a little bit of protection as well. That's a jiffy bag actually that I've uh, wrapped it in inside there. The flask, important particularly in the winter, isn't it? To get plenty of, uh, plenty of hot drinks. And there, in uh, some bubble wrap, is a radio. Can't really see it, but uh, it's a radio. I like to listen to the football sometimes, maybe the news and uh, all that sort of stuff. Keep it nice and low, don't disturb anyone. A towel, that's a well-worn <laughs> a well worn towel there, but you need that for doing your hands, particularly with ground bait, hence that I've got that, uh, that there. I do fish with, um, with uh, mashed bread for chub, but I sometimes like to top it up with, uh, with a little bit of uh, ground bait. And there, finally, is my uh, is my box, my tackle box. I'll get that out now and show you what's inside. So there's my box with the drawers open, and we'll take a, we'll take a close look now at some of the uh, some of the things we've got there. Main feature, as you can see there, is a, is a rig board. I do like these particular boxes. I've actually got four of them, so I keep them for certain species. This is my chub, roach, perch, crucian carp box. And then, along the front there, no doubt see, 
got some uh, artificial maggots in there. I've got beads and uh, uh, top and tail rubbers. I use those a lot from greys and also swivels. So those boxes double up. So there are two in each uh, each compartment. Moving along, you can see the uh, the hangers there. I fish with those for roach, crucian carp, and perch. Some shot, an assortment of uh, of leads. Moving up, well, let's look at the next drawer. You can see some different types of uh, of line in there, and some uh, some small uh, perch live bait floats. There's some more boxes there. If you can look inside, well I won't open it but you can probably see there isotope stuff and rig making things in there and then underneath I've got an assortment of, of hooks and then the next compartment we've got um, floats, disgorges and scissors and then there's the final drawer as you can see there I've got some shot, got some more line Got some braid scissors and some cage feeders. So that is my box, my tackle box that comes with me on all my chub sessions. Everything I need is in there. So the fishing session then. Let's uh, let's look at that. Anyway, behind me you can see some uh, some tubs there. I've got all my ground bait, boilies, pellets, and uh, dips and additives and all that sort of stuff in various uh, tubs. It's good to have a, a place to keep your gear. Some people have a shed at the bottom of the garden. If you do, you need to be very careful. It certainly needs to be uh, well protected and not publicized either. Um, others use a garage, which is probably a bit more secure. Some people maybe can use the house, maybe a spare room or whatever. Or we have to put our gear up a lobby somewhere or a, um, behind, a, behind something else. You know the sort of thing I mean, just trying to make the most of the space we've got. But I'm sure we all have somewhere where we do keep our fishing tackle and this is my place. So the fishing, well the first couple of clips you can see me uh, showing my uh, my end gear to the uh, to the camera, the lead and the uh, the setup there it's very very simple free running lead and a grazed top rubber which is uh, which is held in place by a shot which in effect then creates the uh, the hook length. So let's have a have a look at that. And of course you saw the bait there, just a piece of bread pinched around the shank with the, uh, the, the, the rest of the, uh, of the bread uh, sort of left so that it can go quite uh, fluffy as it hits the, uh, as it hits the water and takes water on. And it's been working for me, so bread is a very simple bait, isn't it? And it's certainly been uh, catching some chub, as you're going to see uh, shortly. So then casting out, getting the rod down, getting everything set up putting it into the, uh, in, into the rest and waiting for that fish. And then the rod goes round and I'm playing a fish. It was just a two hour session, and as I often say, it's better to spend a shorter amount of time, which is the right time, in the right place, than it is to go all day, or three days, or four days, but be in the wrong place, and it's not really the right time. So it's important, I only had a couple of hours anyway, and I, and I timed it just right, and I got into that uh, fish. It certainly put up, a, put up a good fight, but eventually it made the net, and I was able to photograph it and release it. Excellent. Just one fish and it just shows, doesn't it, how there is a fine line sometimes between, can I use inverted commas, success and failure. Because the reality is, in angling, there's no such thing as success and failure, really. It's all about enjoyment. But of course we want to catch fish. And so in that sense, in that context, I would say success and failure. But even if we don't catch, we can still enjoy. I've had times when I've been there by the water's edge and I've blanked, but I've seen dippers and I've seen ravens, kingfishers, you name it. I've seen those things. I'm an avid nature watcher 
and so I've had a great time. I've come back home, I've blanked, but I've been buzzing because I've seen a barn owl. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Can't always get lots of fish action shots because uh, fishing on my own, it's not always possible to get that sort of stuff with one man and his camcorder. And I wanted to do things a little bit differently as well this year. So I've tried something uh, last couple of weeks, based at home with my tackle around me, working through that, talking about that. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been uh, encouraging and certainly pick up a few tips along the way. Make sure you visit my angling website. It's been going since 2003. I update it every single Saturday with an article and this year with a video. So make sure you check it out and I'll see you soon. And if you're out and about yourself, tight lines.